Hello guys and welcome to Boater Beam. Today I've got this, the Honda Hornet 160R which was the last iteration of the BS4 variant. But Honda forgot to update it for V6. Well, they have got the new version. And in today's video, I've got the Honda Hornet 2.0, the BS6 update which is right over here. Now, with the visual reference, you can see there's a lot of difference and the reviews are already out. So let's compare this motorcycle with the older version and see what's really new. But before we begin, subscribe to Motor Beam and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Now everyone has been saying that the Honda Hornet 2.0 is based out of the CB190R which is an international variant. If you can see a picture right over here. But my take is that it is an actual combination of the 190R along with the 160R, the Hornet 160R because this motorcycle has worked as a canvas for the 2.0. Both the motorcycles are standing next to each other and the only thing that is giving it away are the golden USD forks which is similar to that of the CB190R on the Hornet 2.0. The 160R does not get those and the headlight structure is similar in both the motorcycles but the Hornet 2.0 still resembles a little bit more to the 190R. But as soon as I move a little bit behind, I can see that the tank structure, the tank design is a lot similar in both the motorcycles. However, you get these tank shrouds which are nicely designed and if you look at the quarter panels too, there is a different design too. The Hornet 160R had a complete body design here there are different splits looking at the seats you now get a split seat unit on the 2.0 while you had a single piece seat on the 160R however the seat was actually slightly longer on the 160R it is slightly smaller on the 2.0 and if you come a little bit more behind you can see that the grab rails are also slightly different while the x-shaped tail light has been continued now looking at the lower half there are two things that are different that the stubby exhaust from the 160R has been replaced by a slightly smaller unit on the 2.0 while the 2.0 also gets an engine cowl. There are some similarities in both the motorcycles one of them being that the sari guard is exactly the same in both the motorcycles and the footpath positioning for the pillion is also similar however footpegs for both the rider as well as the pillion are slightly different. Both the motorcycles get 10 spoke alloys however the idea is the same the design is slightly different for both the wheels. You still get a 140 section tire at the rear, however the front tire is slightly thicker by 10 mm. The instrument cluster of the Hornet 160R is a complete digital unit. You do get basic information like the speedometer, tachometer, fuel gauge, twin trip meters, odometer and a clock. But now as I look at the cluster of the Hornet 2.0, value, well, you got a brand new unit but the details are almost the same as that of the 160R. You do however get two new details that is the battery voltage meter and a gear position indicator and this cluster is finished in negative LCD. So if you are riding in bright sunlight, you might not be able to see the details pretty clearly. The left side switch gear on both the motorcycle is almost the same. There are no new extra switches which have come into place. However, the right side switch gear has got finally a kill switch on a motorcycle from Honda. Finally. After the BS4 update, you used to get hazard light switch on the 160R. However, the key positioning on the 2.0 has been taken away from the meter and has been put onto the tank. And this one actually feels a solid place to be. The lever feel on both the motorcycles is exactly the same but there's a difference for the indicators. You never got LED indicators on the 160R, you do get LED indicators on the 2.0 which are actually nice and strong. Now as I'm seated on the Hornet 160R, I can say that this motorcycle has been a very comfortable place to be on because this is a comfortable motorcycle from the start. Upright riding posture with center set foot pegs, well this is a good place to be on. Let's see what is the difference on the 2.0. <laughs> now as soon as I'm seated on the motorcycle, I can see there's one big difference that the seat cushioning is slightly harder. The handlebar position as well as the satellite is slightly taller. That is the reason because the USD folks have come into picture and it has increased by almost 1 to 2 mm. The handlebar structure, the ergonomic triangle is actually almost similar but you are a little more comfortable, slightly more upright compared to the 160R. Talking about the mirrors, well the design in both the motorcycles is exactly the same, however the concave feel on the lens over here does not give a good view of what's really behind and talking about behind the pillion seat has gone away with its comfort because this is not as comfortable not as spacious as the 160R was. The grab handle is also slightly smaller giving less grip to the pillion. 
Now with the wider view, I can get into technical details and give you such specific information that the wheelbase has actually increased by almost 9 to 10 mm. But if we compare the weight, the 2.0 is just 1 kg heavier as compared to the 160R. Let's see how easy is it to put it on a main stand. Very easy. Well, here you can feel a little bit more weight. However, this one is still lighter. Now talking about the heart of the matter which has had a major update, it's the engine and that has had a major change because the Hornet 160R from the start produced 15.7 horsepower, then it came down to 15 horsepower and the last iteration came down to literally 14.9 horsepower. But over here, you've got a bigger motor. Now the case is very different. Everyone will say this is a brand new engine, but if we get into the specific details, this is actually a big bore version of that engine because the stroke is the same, the bore is slightly larger. And this 184cc motor produces 17 horsepower, which is almost two and a half horsepower more than that motorcycle, and that feels a lot. This one also produces 16 Nm of torque in the early RPM. So the mid-range is very strong of this motorcycle, but the throttle response is crisp throughout. You do have a good low end, very strong mid-range, but the top end of both the motorcycles, although with a 20cc difference, it is almost the same. For a normal person or even the owner of this 160R who rode the 2.0 told me that this motorcycle feels a little bit livelier and a better breathing motorcycle rather than being more powerful. With a bigger engine, this motorcycle is actually faster to hit the turn and here are the V-Box numbers. The Hornet 2.0 definitely misses out on a kickstart and a choke switch which was present on the 160R thanks to that being carbureted. This one is BSX compliant and has FIS standard. And talking about BSX compliance, well there is a pre-cad which is very visible right below the engine. Honda, you have given this an engine cowl. You could have hidden it over there, right? What happened to the design? Not that smart. The 160R was air-cooled from the start and same is the case here for the 2.0 even after being a brand new motorcycle is that it does not get liquid cooling, oil cooling or anything of that sort and if we compare to the bare basics, to the bare numbers the 160R had actually higher compression as compared to the 2.0 what? what? I've been riding both the motorcycles one after the other and I can tell you one thing that the vibrations from the 160R were quite a lot less and same is the case here for the 2.0. You get the tingling feeling right close to the red line, but throughout the rev range, this motorcycle is just smooth, like a Honda. Honda. And both these motorcycles have a very similar exhaust note. Yes, because they are Honda, right? The 2.0 actually sounds a slightly bit sportier. Both the motorcycles still use a diamond frame and the chassis structure is almost similar. But there's one thing that we liked a lot from the 160R and that is the handling. The feedback from the handlebars, the feedback from the complete chassis and same is the case here. But things have improved even better because the suspension setup has gone slightly harder both at the front and the rear so you get tons and tons and tons of feedback from this motorcycle however this has resulted in a bad manner for riding comfort so if you're looking for comfort the 160r was comfortable slightly softer but now there's a ton of feedback and if you have a pillion i've had a pillion my camera guy and he has been complaining a lot because there's so much feedback it actually hits your back 
If you're tackling bad roles, well, you might not be as happy as you were on the 160R, but then the 2.0 still has slightly better ground clearance, so yes, you won't hit the belly. However, you don't hit the top speed on both the motorcycle crossing 130 km per hour, but the straight line stability is actually slightly better now on the 2.0 while being even more agile and yet nimble in the corners too because we were very happy with the 160 the Honda 2.0 is a gem of a machine if it would have had a better engine a bigger engine this one can actually make a track naked motorcycle the tires on both these motorcycles are coming from MRF the rear tire is exactly the same exact to the spec as a 140 section tire the front tire is slightly thicker at 110 mm so you get a slightly bit more cornering clearance but I am unhappy right now because if you've seen the ads or the first reviews of this motorcycle, you could see Maxxis tires. And I have reviewed those tires and those tires actually grip better compared to MRS. So if you're lucky and if you get Maxxis tires, you will actually be more happier as compared to the MRS, which are stock. So you can see this pedal disc. Well, these discs, both at the front and the rear, are similar to that of the 160R. There has been no change at all. You still get a single channel ABS. And if you just stomp on the brakes on the main road, you can just smoke your rear tire. However, the braking feedback is slightly better because you get a little bit more lever feel on the 2.0. The tank design might be different, but you still get a 12 litre fuel tank. And I've been riding this motorcycle for the last 75 to 80 kilometers and I've done full tank twice. I can tell you that this motorcycle has returned me an exact mileage of 34.3 kilometers per litre. But I've been riding slightly spiritedly, so you can expect a good mileage of close to 37 to 38 kilometers per litre. So the friend of mine who owns this 160R paid 1,22,000 for that motorcycle and then if you want to get yourself the Honda 2.0, you will have to shell out a little more than 1.5 lakhs. Well, that is quite a sum but if you look at it from my perspective, as a B6 update, you do get a brand new motorcycle with a bigger engine and yes, the sportiness of the Honda which was there from the start. People have been comparing this motorcycle to the Apache and the Pulsar the proper competitor to this one is nothing else but the Yamaha MT-15 which is the proper Japanese rival. So if you are out in the market to get yourself a sporty motorcycle, a sporty commuter, this is the one that you should go for. Or else you can pick the Yamaha, another Japanese. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, do hit the like button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.